All right, so uh, today we're going to make a bracket, and um, and it's also going to represent the first video in a series or playlist I'm going to create called uh, Fabrication Basics. Uh, there's a lot of people that watch my channel that are master fabricators that know way more about this stuff than I do uh, that certainly uh, help keep me in line and, and help educate me as we go along here. Um, but I also recognize there's a lot of people, uh, maybe just as many if not more people, watching the channel that are just getting into it, you know, kind of learning the basics of fabrication and welding, or maybe haven't even started yet and are just interested in it, um, you know, that could use some more basic, helpful information. So as I'm making things around the shop, I'm going to, you know, take opportunities to make these kind of videos. So what we're doing today is making a very, very simple bracket. And uh, making brackets is something, you know, if you're going to do any kind of fabrication, probably something you'll, you'll do a lot of, whether it's a bracket that gets, you know, one side of it is welded to something and the other side of it is bolted, like what we're going to do today, or an adapter where there's two different bolt patterns and you're making a, a bracket or an adapter to, to adapt the two together. Um, so today what we're making is a bracket to support um, a towel holder that is going on this bathroom vanity that's part of a larger project. Um, if you're interested in these kind of videos um, and you want to see more of these basic fabrication videos, just click the link right here um, and that'll take you to a playlist and I'll also put the link in the description and uh, put a card for uh, you mobile users out there. Um, and that'll take you to a playlist that you'll see uh, all of the videos in this series uh, you know, uh, showing the basic fabrication. All right. Uh, so the first thing that you that we want to do here is just do a little bit of basic layout um, and <clears throat> I'm overlaying footage and you'll see kind of back and forth between these these props that I've got um, and the real footage of the real bracket being made just kind of talking you through it so the first thing that we're gonna do you know that you're gonna do uh, or we're doing in this particular case is doing a little bit of layout work where we want to get the holes lined up where we want them drilled um, so we're gonna clamp this down to the welding table and we're going to use a transfer punch first of all to transfer the hole locations uh, over onto the um, onto the the piece that we're going to drill. Okay. Um, so then once we get that clamp, we're going to come back with a um, automatic center punch and and deepen the holes because usually the transfer punch is just to put a witness mark. You're not looking to create a deep um, you know start for the hole. So we come back with um, with a automatic center punch just to just to deepen the hole even more. And in some cases, I'll come back with a marker and highlight the hole so that when we get ready to drill them, I'll be able to see them better. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and go over to the drill press. And now we're gonna, uh, you know, sometimes you know you'll see me using a, a mill, clamping things in a vise, you know, getting the the head of the mill, um, you know, over the, the, the hole that we're going to drill. Um, an easier way for something simple like this, where there's not going to be a lot of torque put on the part, is uh, just use a, um, a center drill or um, a step bit, something that's got a fine point on it, and let it sort of find its own center and, and find the, uh, uh, the punch mark on its own and then, and then drill through. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get the, the center uh, holes drilled through. This, these are going to take quarter inch bolts and we're going to drill the through hole on the back side to 270 thousandths. Um, so, you know, 250 thousandths is a quarter inch. So just a little bit of clearance there for, uh, to allow for some wiggle room. Okay. So, uh, and then after that, we're going to come back and just do a quick chamfer on the holes to clean up the edges and, um, you know, get the burrs off of them and that kind of thing. So after we got the holes drilled, uh, the next operation that we're going to do is we're going to just round out the the bracket itself, okay? Uh, cut the square corners off of it and just create a radius that, that you know, is sort of gently follows the same uh, general outline and radius of the part that's, that's uh, that you're using. And you want to try to uh, pick a base piece of steel that's at least as wide as the part, you know, so you can fit your bolt holes. And, you don't want it overly too wide, but you don't want it, certainly don't want it too narrow. Um, all right, so then uh, after we do that, we want to 
uh, take it and uh, you can use a you know hand grinder for this um, you know angle grinder you know whatever you have we're just gonna happen to you could use a bench grinder we're, we've got a belt grinder and we're gonna use that uh, to go ahead and uh, round those corners in as you can see there all right so after we do that we're gonna come back um, one of the points I wanted to make is when you're when you're making a bracket you want to do all of your uh, you know, putting holes in it, putting slots in it, any anything that you would need to do where you've got to fixture it in some way, you want to do that before you cut it to its final length and certainly before you, um, you know, start bending any part of it because once you, once you bend it, um, you've limited your ability to uh, get it clamped, um, you know, down and, and maybe drill it or the, the reach of the drill, you know, may, may not be able to pass through the bend. So, so once we get everything ready, um, you know, in the, in the base, uh, you know, the holes and, and, and all that, we want to take measurements to, you know, figure out exactly how we want to get this mounted um, and, and how long the bracket needs to be and where the bend needs to be. So just kind of holding it up, mocking it up, using a tape measure to get some rough ideas of where uh, we want to cut this and bend this. You want to get all your holes drilled and, and everything positioned before you make any bends. So we're, we're making a couple marks here. One is going to be our cutoff for the final length of the bracket. And then the next line that we're drawing is the bend line. So we're going to go over to the brake. Um, this is eighth inch material. This brake can handle eighth inch material. If you don't have a brake, uh, you can easily put this in a vise. You can clamp it to a table. You can use some heat, you know, and a hammer. Get it bent over any way you can. Okay, uh, so we have a break and that's what we're using. So we're going to get this bent over as you can see. All right, so we got the bracket all finished up here. We're going to just, uh, you know, go ahead and bolt it together. And uh, this out of the way. So I'll put our bolt in. These are just quarter 20 bolts. Are you seeing what I'm seeing here? I mean, what do you think about that bolt? Will that work? Yeah, it's quarter 20. You know, it's a quarter inch hole in the um, flange here and the uh, 270 thousandths hole uh, that we made in the bracket. It will fit, but come on now. If you guys are gonna be making brackets and putting stuff together, get some good bolts and get the right bolts and get the ones that fit the best and the one, right ones for the application. As you can see, these, you know, call for a countersink bolt. So for a buck or two, you can go get some countersink bolts that are just the right size and the right length, okay? So these are quarter 20 stainless bolts. And yeah, I know stainless is, um, you know, can uh, gall the threads and, you know, there's different issues using stainless bolts, but um, we're gonna use them. And uh, so, and then the other thing that I like to use, that's just a regular, nut and you could use a, a split type lock washer on it but I like to use these nylocks on pretty much everything and um, you know is this a application where this could vibrate loose you know probably not but that's exactly what you want you just want the head of the bolt to come through a sixteenth uh, or so. So we'll get the rest of them in here. And uh, get this, uh, get it mounted and welded on. So uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up and, and show you how to get it uh, mounted on there. Now we've got the, uh, the, the proper bin in the, in the position that we want it. Um, and the next thing that we're gonna do, as you can see here, is we're getting set up to get this welded in place. Sometimes, I mean, ideally you'd like to be able to clamp it or use a magnet to get it in position, but depending on where you are and what you're working on, uh, you may not have that option, but we're just, um, you know, we're just positioning it in, in, into place and we are, um, you know, gonna go, go ahead and get a couple of tacks on it here and I'm showing you from the backside. And once we get it tacked, we can do some final uh, tweaking and positioning of it and then go ahead and get uh, the final weld um, burned in.
All right, we'll do the final installation here and see how it looks. exactly what you want you know the the head of the bolt to just uh, come through the end of it a 16th to 